So we're going to talk about microscopes quickly. Um, and there are a couple of different kinds of microscopes that you might hear about in biology that are used to study cells. There are three things that we look for when we're looking for how well a microscope is going to allow us to see cells. The first one, which is the most obvious, is magnification. When you, uh, when you add lenses, you can magnify stuff more. The problem is that you can't just magnify things to an unlimited level. If you think of it, it's not exactly the same, but if you think about it on your iPad when you're trying to see details in a picture and you start trying to stretch the picture, eventually it just gets blurry. The same thing is going to actually happen with microscopes. We can keep adding lenses to try to increase how much a microscope magnifies, but eventually what's going to happen because of the fact that light scatters as it passes through the lenses is that our image is eventually going to become blurry. Probably the biggest factor that's going to determine how well we can see things is going to be resolution. Resolution is the ability to see between two things that are really close together and still be able to see them as two separate things. Um, for example, if, if I put two dots here, most people could see them as two dots. But if I put them really, really close together and you were way in the back of the room, to you, it might look like one dot. Because you're so far away, you can't distinguish the tiny distance between them. And that's exactly what's going to happen with microscopes. So, um, and again, what it really has to do with is the properties of light. The fact that light scatters as it passes through lenses. So even if we add a lot of lenses, once you get magnified to a certain extent, you won't be able to focus it anymore. It'll, it'll be blurry. The last thing that we look at is contrast. In other words, if, if all the cell parts are the same color, you're going to have a hard time distinguishing them because they're all going to blend together. So if we can increase the contrast by maybe staining certain cell parts, like in the lab we'll stain the nucleus, for example, with methylene blue. Then the nucleus will be bright blue. It'll be super easy to see. Whereas without the stain, everything kind of looks clear and washed out. It's much harder to see. So these are the three factors that we would be looking at. The first kind of microscope, and this will be the one that we'll be using, is the light microscope. Light microscopes, we literally, you've used them before, I'm sure. You look through the eyepiece, there's an objective lens, the two lenses together give us a magnification. But the most a light microscope will be able to magnify, even the best light microscope, is going to be about 2,000 times. The ones that we're using, and they're not cheap microscopes, they magnify about 400 times. Um, which is still good, but it won't allow us to see some cell parts. Like, well, we won't be able to see a, a ribosome with the microscopes we use. In fact, you probably couldn't see a ribosome even with the best light microscope. It just doesn't magnify enough. The resolution, this will not be on a test, the resolution. Um, but it's up to 200 nanometers, meaning things could be as close together as 200 nanometers apart, and you would still be able to distinguish them as two separate things. That's about a thousand... Um, 200 nanometers is, uh, if you figure, about a millionth, a billion, millionth of a millimeter, and you'd still be able to see them uh, as two separate things, give or take. Um, and again, most cell organ organelles are too small to see. The next two kinds of microscopes both use electrons instead. Um, these pictures at the top are actually from a light microscope. Notice how hard it is to see this first one, especially the further back you are. It probably looks like there's almost nothing there. That's what we're talking about contrast. If we add stains like this one, or even this one, I can tell it's got some kind of blue stain, we can modify our light source, we can change the color of our light, we can also add stains. By doing that, we're going to see our, our specimens better. These other pictures are actually not taken with a light microscope. These are taken with electron microscopes, which are the next ones we're going to talk about. So electron microscopes magnify a lot more. Um, if you look at the scanning electron microscope, it magnifies up to 30,000 times. It gives you a three-dimensional image. Again, resolution won't be on a test, but it has better resolving power. You can see between things that are just 10 nanometers apart. Transmission electron microscopes can magnify up to 10 million times, so even more. And their resolution is even better. Again, won't be on a test, but 0.2 nanometers apart, and you would still be able to distinguish between them. This is because beams of electrons do not scatter the way that light does. So you're able to get more detail, you're able to get better resolving power so that you can see the things that are closer together, and so you can magnify a lot more without it getting blurry. The main difference between them, I would say, like test-wise, obviously transmission magnifies more, 
But in addition to that, the fact that uh, the, the scanning electron is going to be a three-dimensional image, and it's going to be outside, and the scanning electron, I mean, the uh, transmission electron is going to give you more of a, um, like a, you could see a thin slice of something on the inside. Um, I have a picture, actually, on my iPad. Let me see if I can, I'll send it over there. In the, I think it's better than the one that's in the, in the PowerPoint. So bear with me for a second. So this, I think this will show the difference between the two. If you look here, make this a little bigger. So this is, um, this is with a scanning electron microscope on the left. See how it's three dimensional? And it, you can see all the external features of these things, all the, bu the, the rough, bumpy surfaces. These are uh, bacterial cells. And then this is with a transmission electron microscope on the right side. And notice in this case, they slice everything in half, and you can see the internal structures in detail. So that's the difference between them. Scanning electron, three-dimensional outer structures. Transmission electron allows you to see the inside. They use micro, like micro scalpels to slice them, and then they also stain them with a metallic stain uh, once they do that. But believe it or not, there, there are these micro scalpels that can slice things on a microscopic level. Um, just like they, can, they actually have micro pipettes that are so tiny you could actually uh, insert a nucleus into a cell. With a, they're so small. You do it under, under uh, magnification to do it. Um, this is another picture. Just to show you, and by the way, um, so this is scanning electrons, see how it's three-dimensional? This is cilia, which are like the little hairs on certain microorganisms, or you also have cilia in your, uh, in your um, air passages, and, and you have cilia-like structures in your intestines. And this is uh, with the, the other microscope, the transmission, how you can see the inside of a cilia. Um, electron microscopes cost like $50,000 and up, um, plus you take Usually you have to take like a whole course on how to use one. Like you can't just walk in like you can with a light microscope and learn how to use it in five minutes. The, the slides have to be prepared with metal stains. They have to be done in a vacuum. Like you have to take all the air out. It's in a vacuum. The electrons shine on there. And then it's, it like shoots the image onto a, a screen that you look at. So you don't actually look at the images directly. So that's the difference between the two. Um, two more things, techniques that we use. Fluorescence, we can use. Instead of just using regular dyes, we can also use radioactive dyes, uh, which will basically make, under electron microscopes, make things glow in different colors. So you might have a dye that stains the nucleus, or specifically stains um, parts of the cytoskeleton, um, or uh, nerve fibers, or whatever, and then you would be able to see, um, see everything glow, and obviously that would improve your contrast. The other one, the other technique that will also help is we can uh, do something called cell fractionation. You basically can take the cells, put them in a, believe it or not, in a blender, something very much like a blender, chop them up so that all the cell parts spill out. Obviously, the cells are dead now. Uh, and then you spin them in a centrifuge, which if a centrifuge, if you're familiar with it, when it spins, all the heavy stuff sinks to the bottom. So by centrifuging it, the heaviest cell parts will sink to the bottom. Nucleus is actually the heaviest of all the cell parts. So if you spin it for a few minutes, you basically would then be able to pull out just the nuclei, pour off the, the liquid. It's called the supernatant. You could just study the nuclei. Uh, you could then take this and spin it more. The next heaviest part will all sink to the bottom, which is going to be mitochondria. Just study mitochondria. So you could actually break cells into their individual components, and then you would be able to study uh, each cell part one at a time. So you would be able to look at just mitochondria under a microscope, see what they do, treat them with chemicals, see how they behave, stain them, whatever you want it to do. All right, and then to wrap everything up, what do all cells have in common? And this is where we're going to stop. So all cells basically have four things in common. They all have a cell membrane that surrounds them. They all have cytosol, or you may have heard it called cytoplasm before. Same thing. They all have DNA, which is basically found on chromosomes. They do not necessarily have it in a nucleus, though, but they do have DNA found on chromosomes. And last but not least, people tend to forget about this one. All cells have ribosomes because they can't manufacture proteins without them. So even the simplest bacteria that are alive would have these four cell parts in common with you, 
with the cells in your body. And that's actually where we're going to stop today so that we can do some review.